Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihi al-kareem. It is today the 20th day of the blessed month of Ramadan. And the Jews for today go to my book, The Quran in the Moon. For the 20th day, it is Surah Al-Sad, Surah Al-Zumar, and Surah Al-Ghafir. Now then, on the 20th day, remember when the 20th day comes to an end, the 20th night will begin. Laylatul, um, the 20th night will begin. And it is Laylatul Jum'ah. And uh, our Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, <coughs> look for Laylatul Qadr on the odd nights of the last one-third of Ramadan. So the 21st night, which is tonight, the 23rd, the 25th, the 27th, and the 29th. So we begin today with just a brief talk on Laylatul Qadr. What is Laylatul Qadr? The night of Qadr. Qadr usually means power. He is Qadr, Qadr the one who has power. and. Um, the, sorry, the night of power, Laylatul Qadr, is in the Quran because Allah says, Ba'da'uzu billahi min ash-shaytani rajeem, inna anzalnahu fi Laylatul Qadr. We sent it down, meaning we sent down the Quran on Laylatul Qadr. The Quran is with Allah. And it is a recitation which is with Allah. It is guarded and protected fi lawhil mahfuz, lawhil mahfuz, in a preserved tablet, guarded tablet. And fi uh, kitab al maknun, it is a recitation which is in a book which is guarded or protected. So Quran is a recitation. If you destroy every single copy of the printed Quran on, in the whole world today, you've done nothing to the Quran, nothing, <laughs> because the Quran is a recitation. And this <coughs> divine recitation was sent down as the last to come from the Lord God. Every Christian should listen to this. Every Hindu, every Buddhist, every Jew must listen to this. This is the last to come down from the Lord God. If you neglect the last to come down from the Lord God, what is the price that you would pay? I'm speaking to the Hindu and to the Jew and the Christian and the Buddhist, not just to the Muslim. So <coughs> the whole Quran was sent down on this night and that is what makes this night so important. But the Quran was also revealed in the month of Ramadan, Shahr Ramadan, Alladhi Unzila Fihil Quran. So Laylatul Qadr, the night in which the Quran was sent down, is a night in the month of Ramadan. And Ramadan is not a month that comes from the Vatican, from a Gregorian calendar. Ramadan is a lunar month. The Hindu has the lunar month, the Christian, the Jew, the Buddhist, the Muslim, but we've all abandoned the lunar month today and embraced the jazz, bogus, <laughs> secular month, yeah, in which a month, can, it's so funny, a month can have 28 days, yes, and a month can have 29 days, because the jazz says so. And so everybody accepted. But no, 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 a lunar, a lunar man can never have 28 days. Forget it. A lunar man can never have 31 days. Forget it. So this is a sign. When we have abandoned the Lord God and we are following the Jal, when we accept uncritically so a month of 28 days, a month of 31 days. And so now back to our subject. The reason why this night is so important, the only reason why this night is so important is because its connection 
with the Quran, the last revelation to come from the God of Abraham and Moses and Jesus and Muhammad, Allah's blessings be upon him. What is this night? Laylatul Qadri Khairum Min Alf Shahar. This night is superior, better, more valuable than a thousand months, meaning not 999 plus one. No, no, a thousand months, meaning a very long period of time, a whole lifetime or more. This night is more important than all of that time. But then you will ask, but wait a minute, did the Quran not come down over a period of 23 years? How come you think it came down in one night? Answer, it came down from Allah to the lowest heaven, the lowest uh, parallel universe on this night. And from there, the lowest heaven, the lowest sama, it came down piecemeal to the heart of the Prophet And so there are two ways the Quran came down. It came down once from the Divine Presence to the lowest heaven. It came down secondly piecemeal to the heart of the Prophet over a period of 23 years. Is there a third way? Yes, it is. Yes, there is a third way. That every night of this blessed month of Ramadan, Allah recited the whole Quran from cover to cover to the Prophet Each night there is a juice that he recited and he never cut any surah of the Quran. No, no, no. And then he completed the whole recitation in the month of Ramadan. Every Ramadan except the last year of the life of the Prophet That's the only, month, only time that he recited the whole Quran twice. Now then, what is so important about this night which is located in the last one-third of the month of Ramadan in the odd night? Where do you look for the answer? The answer must come first of all from the Quran, not from the Hadith or not from some Sheikh. The answer must come from the Quran. After the Quran, you can go elsewhere, but this comes first. And whatever is in the Quran sits in judgment of everything else. This is what is important about this night. This is the night when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in commemoration of this historic event, celebration of this historic event, He sends down the angels and He sends down the Ruhul Qudus, Jibra'il alayhi salam, in kulli amr to perform any task that Allah assigns to them. What could be the task? The first thing of all to use your intelligence is what the believers have been asking for all through Ramadan and outside of Ramadan. Your dua is important. What are you asking for? When you ask and you ask and you ask, this is the night. He's sending them down to, full, to answer your dua, okay? The first and most important dua of all on this night, because this is the night of the Quran, is to ask for the Quran. That's right. Ask for the knowledge of the Quran. Ask to be blessed with the knowledge of the Quran, the understanding of the Quran. Ask to be blessed with the, <coughs> excuse me, the nur of the Quran. Ask to be blessed for the Shifa of the Quran. Ask to be blessed with the Hedayah of the Quran. Ask for all of these things. Ask also to be protected from misguidance, from mistakes, from misunderstanding of the Quran. That you might not make a mistake in your understanding of the Quran and in your explanation of the Quran. I ask for this every time I recite the Quran. I always ask for this for protection. Ask for the insight to be able to penetrate the Quran. 
These are the things to ask for. When you ask for this, then you can ask for other things. There are those of you who are in debt. It's a terrible thing to be in debt, yes. And you'd want to get out of debt, because if you die and you have a debt with you, the Prophet Wasalam, did not, he refused to perform the Salatul Janaza of someone who died with a debt. And then one of his companions said, O Messenger Allah, I'll pay the debt. Then the Prophet Wasalam, performed the Salatul Janaza over that body. So you would not want to live with a debt, you want to get out of debt. So ask on this night, O oh Allah, open for me a way that I might get out of debt. <laughs> some, of the, some of you are ill, you have chronic illnesses, or your mother might be ill, your father might be ill, someone near and dear to your wife or your husband, and you living in difficulty because of illness. But he is a sh shafi, he can give shifa. So this is a night to ask and beg for Allah. And when you ask, you don't ask only with your lips. You must also ask with your heart. But <laughs> I want to tell you how Nabi Suleiman his sunnah, how he used to ask, which is the next talk I'm going to give. Before he would ask for something, he would first ask for forgiveness for sins. What a wonderful sunnah for us as well. Before we ask for something, first ask for forgiveness for sins. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.